It is an administration that came into power inheriting a foreign mission instigated by the Grand Coalition government that preceded it. Operation Lindanchi, which began in October 2011 when KDF forces stormed Somalia to quell the Al-Shabaab threat, was just 17 months old when President Uhuru Kenyatta came into power. How has Uhuru's government, the incumbent, handled Kenya's foreign fight? KTN's Timothy Otieno explores tonight on the Jubilee scorecard on the eve of Uhuru's fourth anniversary. It would be the first time independent Kenya invaded a foreign nation. A mission in 2011, spearheaded by the Kenya Defense Forces, meant that Kenya would now join Africa Union troops inside Somalia to combat the Al Shabaab. The costly affair initially would not be felt. The Al Shabaab declared war on Kenya and several months later intensified attacks inside Kenya's borders. Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto, who had just got to the helm of the country's leadership, insisted that Kenya would stay the course inside Somalia. I'm proud to say that our forces are ready to do their duty. By a large extent, the Kenya Defense Forces has made progress, liberating the key towns of Kismayo and Barawe, therefore choking off the terror group's main income-generating centers. And indeed, Al-Shabaab's influence inside the war-torn nation has declined over the last four years. Currently, the group is believed to control just less than 10% of the country's capital, Mogadishu. Al-Shabaab is not as strong as it used to be, but it's still as deadly as they have demonstrated to us during Kulbiyo, during El Ade, and many other attacks. But those victories may have come at a painful cost. Friday, January the 15th, 2016, the terror group would strike its worst blow since troops landed their boots on Somali's soil. A well-planned dawn attack at a Kenyan base in El Ade town would almost annihilate the KDF troops. The terrorists would detonate improvised explosive devices mounted on a truck inside the base, and by the time the smoke settled, tens of soldiers had lost their lives. Kenya will move forward. To those misguided elements who think that their cowardly actions have shaken us, let me tell them today that their actions have only made us stronger and emboldened us in our determination to defeat them. The Kenyan government responded in quick fury, engaging in spontaneous attacks in towns near El Ade with the chief of KDF, General Samson Mwatete. That the blood of our fallen heroes was not shed in vain announcing that the retaliation attacks had killed the leader who had orchestrated the El Ade attack. But that announcement had come too late for the friends and families of the slain soldiers who had paid the ultimate price for a war that may be far from over. Sisi tuko itiari kuhakikisha ya kwamba tutaendelea na shuguli yetu ya kuhakikisha ya kwamba tumelete amani katika inchi zetu jirani. The original scene was us going into Somalia without A, properly explaining what the mission was, B, without stating what is the end game. The problem with not having an end game and not having a clearly outlined objective is that every time now, whenever something happens, the statement that comes from the presidency, whether well-meaning, is that we will stay the course until we finish the problem. What is the problem? With more than 3,000 Kenyan troops still inside Somalia, Uhuru Kenyatta's administration has maintained close ties with Somalia's federal government, led by newly elected President Mohamed Famajo. Therefore, my government is ready to work very closely with your government in the realization of full economic cooperation between our two nations.
Since KDF went to the Horn of Africa country, it has been estimated that hundreds of troops have lost their lives in the process, even though government remains cagey with the details of the casualties of soldiers who many Kenyans believe are better off defending the country from within Kenya's borders rather than inside Somalia. Timothy Otieno, KTN News.